We're now speaking with Mr. Jonathan Orenstein, who is CEO of Mesa Airlines. Thank you for speaking with me. My pleasure. A couple of questions. First, let's start off with scope. Scope is obviously a huge part of your business. How do you see scope evolving, let's say, over the next five years, if it evolves at all? Well, I think the, we're most hopeful that scope just allows us to fly more of the existing type of aircraft at the same size aircraft that we operate today because already you're seeing some of the carriers bumping up against those restrictions, which would clearly hamper our growth and make our business more difficult as a result. Um, I think that in the question of uh, the scope increasing to make room for larger aircraft, I, I just will tell one story which I think is somewhat telling. Uh, over the course of the merger negotiations with American and US Air, I became very close to Captain David Bates who at the time was president of the American Pilot Union. Um, to celebrate the deal being completed, he and I take an annual motorcycle trip over in Europe. On the last trip, we were in Croatia, and I got a phone call from one of the manufacturers. I was questioning the, the, the purpose or the, the wisdom of building a larger aircraft given scope as it existed, and they responded that they felt that scope would change and it would move up. Well, I yelled over to Captain Bates and I said, what do you think the likelihood of the scope going up in terms of the size of the aircraft? And his response was just laughter. And I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Um, you know, in the industry, we joke about the fact that it'll take another round of bankruptcies to negotiate the scope again. And I don't see that as anything even remotely happening, given the, you know, the condition of the industry now. So. I'm just hoping that we get more relief on the existing aircraft, the Embraer 175 and the CRJ 900s, and we can fly more of those aircraft and that the scope language that exists regarding those limitations gets revised. That is a possibility. I'm concerned that uh, the operation of larger aircraft is going to be a much tougher negotiation and would take rather extreme circumstances to make that happen successfully. So then if we look at that as a, some sort of a limitation, sort of brackets within which you have to operate, let's talk about the new entrants. You've got Mitsubishi getting into the business. You've got Sukhoi Superjet getting into the business. There's a lot of pressure. Do you see this market not only in the U.S., or I guess the U.S. is the scope one, but globally, do you think there's a market there for four manufacturers? Well, globally, I'm sure that there, there could be. Um, in the United States, you're going to have to make an aircraft that is going to be uh, within the scope limitations that currently exist. I think to try to build an aircraft above that, it's going to be very difficult. And it's not to say they're not good aircraft. I mean, the C-Series is an incredibly good airplane. It has excellent operating results for a 100-seat, 125, 130-seat airplane, but it's just not going to be within scope. Uh, the next-gen Embraer is in the same situation. It's overgrowth. So they'd, they will continue f building the, the current 175. Is there a market around the world for those airplanes? Yeah, I think that there certainly will be. And could there be for uh, the, you know Mitsubishi and so Yeah, I believe that there is certainly parts of the world where they may be very well suited to operate those aircraft. But the United States, I think it would be a tough road to hoe if you don't have an airplane within the existing scope. And U.S. is still by far the biggest market for that size airplane, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the last I checked, two-thirds of the regional jets are operated in the United States that are operated worldwide. I mean, you know, Mesa had uh, attempted to put five CRJ-200s in China, which we thought had to be a no-brainer given the population, and we, we couldn't make that work. And I don't believe that there are any 50-seat jets, for example, in, uh, in China right now operating. Last question, if, when you look at the constraints within your business, how it operates, what is the number one thing that you have to look at when you buy an airplane? Um, clearly, you know, it's funny, each of our partners has different perspectives. Um, some of the folks we talk to are solely interested in operating performance, operating, you know, what it's going to cost to operate the aircraft, and others, you know, have put a premium on passenger comfort. So. It really depends on the customer that we're dealing with. Um, we think both of the aircraft types that we operate, the 175 and the 900, serve both of those niches very well. Um, I think that the difference between the two, both in passenger comfort and in operating results, operating type of numbers, is narrowing. So, you know, basically I think the CRJ 900 with the improvements that have been made 
uh, larger windows, bigger bins, changing the lighting. Uh, all those things have made it a much more comfortable and passenger friendly aircraft. And I know that Embraer has worked really hard and has been successful in improving some of the operating cost side of its aircraft, particularly in the area of fuel burn. So I think you see both of the manufacturers working on the areas where there's, there's perceived difference that I think is narrowing pretty significantly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.